Earth is a truly remarkable place, but I've been hearing about other worlds beyond our solar system. How do scientists discover exoplanets? And how do we know what they're like? You know what, Cassie? Let's find out. We don't need a rocket to find out about exoplanets. We can do all of that here on Earth using physics. Contrary to common knowledge, planets don't actually orbit their parent star. Let me demonstrate. Can I borrow your ball, Cassie? Thanks. And this watermelon will be perfect. The watermelon is our star. And the tennis ball, our planet. Newton's law of gravitational attraction shows us that the force from the star on the planet is the same as the planet on the star. They are attracted toward and orbit a shared point. This is the barycenter and is the place where our seesaw will balance. When we get the system spinning, you can see the wobble of the star. Even if you didn't know it was there, you could work out the existence and some basic properties of our planet. We've used astrometry to discover two exoplanets so far, so it does work. However, it is really challenging, especially if the atmosphere is getting in your way. We need to find another way of measuring stellar wobble. Light travels as a wave, just like that of sound. When the source is coming towards you, the wave fronts get all bunched up and frequency increases. When it's going away, frequency decreases as the waves get spread apart. Measuring regular changes in a star's colour caused by this Doppler shift and stellar wobble have allowed us to detect almost 600 exoplanets. I think it's time we took a closer look. Life has a habit of producing gases. In some instances, certain gases can only exist in a planet's atmosphere if life put them there. We call these gases biosignatures. Gases are made of molecules and molecules are made of atoms, each of which are comprised of a central positively charged nucleus surrounded by negatively charged electrons. Heisenberg's uncertainty principle tells us that we can't be 100% sure where the electrons are, but we can know that they are more likely to exist within particular regions. Just as Cassie has more gravitational potential energy at the top of the stairs than at the bottom, orbitals have different energies based on the distance the electron will be from the nucleus. Just like Cassie can only be on the fourth step or the fifth step, not somewhere between the two, electrons have to exist in a specific orbital. When they change, they do this instantly in a process known as a quantum leap. Light travels as a wave, but hits like a particle. We call particles of light photons. When a photon hits an electron, either nothing happens, or the photon is annihilated, transferring all of its energy to the electron. When excited in this way, the electron changes its orbital to reflect its new energy. Because electrons can't exist between levels, five steps is okay, but four and a half is not. Stars produce all energies of light, which our human eyes perceive as color. When the light from a star passes through the planet's atmosphere, excitation occurs, promoting electrons to different orbitals, decimating the light beam of some frequencies or leaving the rest unaffected. Here is a sample of light which has passed through a planet's atmosphere, and these are some known atomic absorption spectra. Notice the dark lines? Well, these correspond with the specific wavelengths used to excite the electron. These are like fingerprints at a crime scene. If we match them up, we can work out which gases are present in the planet's atmosphere. If these correspond with some known biosignatures, then I think we found ourselves some life. Although it would be interesting, I don't really fancy hanging out with glowing goo. I want an advanced civilization with treats, tacos and television. We have no way of spotting the first two from hundreds of light years away, but due to some developments here in Western Australia, we have a good chance of spotting radio waves. On Earth, we use them to send TV and radio signals. Perhaps our alien friends are doing the same. Intensity is reduced by a factor of four when distance is doubled. This is the inverse square law, and it's the reason why we need such big antennas if we wish to communicate when in the outback. If you wanted to pick up a transmission from space, you would need something ridiculous. The Square Kilometre Array is able to get around this by combining many receivers just like this one. By offsetting each receiver with a specific delay, we can pinpoint a location in space, allowing us to listen in on another world. Currently, we have no evidence of life beyond our solar system, but when we do, it will be carried here through rays of light. Just remember, alien civilizations could be using these same techniques to look for us.